Hi guys, welcome to The Headphone Show. For today's video, I have an interview for you with Dr. Fang Bian from Hi-Fi Man. I got a chance to sit down with him and have a conversation at CanJam New York, and I also got a chance to try out the ridiculous high-end electrostatic headphone from Hi-Fi Man, the Shangri-La, and that was one of the craziest headphone experiences that I've had so far. Uh, crazy detail for that thing unbelievably good. But I was more interested in some of the rest of the product line for Hi-Fi Man. Specifically, I recently did a video on their more entry to mid-level headphone, the Sundara, and I really like this headphone. That's this is probably my favorite headphone for the, you know, entry to mid-level uh, around $350 price range. But I had noticed it was a bit different from the previous one that I had evaluated last year, and so I asked Fang Bian about this and whether or not there's any truth to some of the rumors that I've heard about, you know, the rest of the product line and some of the revisions that may or may not have happened there. And he clarified all of that up for me. You know, a lot of you guys have been asking me about where can I buy the latest revision of the Sundara and this interview with Dr. Fang Bian should give you confidence that you can buy a Sundara pretty much anywhere and it'll be whatever the current revision is the same as what everybody else is using. In addition, we also talked about how frequency response can impact different types of music and he said a few things that actually changed my mind on this subject. If you guys have checked out some of my other videos, you'll know that I tend to think that there are different types of tunings that'll do better for different genres. And this conversation leads me to think that it's not as simple as just saying this one's better for jazz and this one's better for pop. It's a lot more complicated than that. And a lot of it has more to do with the type of recording or the recording style that's being used. And so we get into that and we also talk about ideal target curves and what you know technologies are gonna be great for the future of headphones and this hobby in the industry as a whole. But I'll let him tell you all about that. I've left this interview as unedited as possible. There were a few noises in the background and people coming in and out of the room. So I did edit some of that stuff out, but for the most part, this is as raw as it gets. So I hope you guys enjoy. You know, before when we have revision that like uh, HE1000 version one, version two, it is because that uh, the version one and uh, we do have some design problems we need to solve. Yeah. So for the Sundara, um, it's um, uh, what I can promise you is that in the whole year, in mm -hmm. the whole calendar year, last this past year, this past year, yeah. yeah, in the past year, we don't we we don't even change the driver because we uh, we we keep the same same design. Only the first batch or second batch of the Sandara at that time we noticed that there are some uh, some different failures. So okay. we we changed that, but it's about three two or three years ago. Okay. So uh, uh, were the pads changed at all, or the pads stayed the same as well? The pads it is possible because we want to improve the uh, we want to improve the uh, the failure rate uh, right. the, of the page so we but the material is the same but we change the uh, slightly change the structure so all we did is that uh, first is that we want to make the ear the ear pad more be more reliable yeah and uh, also we want to we change the um, the dust uh, the the, uh, the dust cover Mm. Uh, because we want to keep the driver be more clean so mm -hmm. that uh, uh, it's more reliable. In my opinion, the, the, the Sundara that I recently reviewed was the best headphone under like $600, $700. Like, it's fantastic. I loved it. Some people have been saying that uh, similar changes happened to the Ananda and and the Aria as well, with but not necessarily the pads, but with the uh, yokes, they might have been reinforced. Yeah, the yoke, we always think about to to make this more reliable. Yeah. And it's actually, uh, right now, in the new generation, uh, for example, the Deva, uh, we use uh, the whole piece, just one piece. So the one piece of venom is much more reliable than two pieces. Right. So it minimizes the potential failure points. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so what we can see that we actually we we don't want to do revision, but we uh, we want to improve. We know this uh, high fi sound qualities always have uh, always have very good feedback, mm -hmm. but we 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 do work very hard on improving the uh, um, uh, the reliability. Reliability, yeah. yeah. Um, and so for the Ananda, was there any change to the pad at all, or uh, the Ananda? Yeah. Um, no, it's not the pad. It's, it's the same. It's a dust cover. It's oh, oh, dust cover. Okay. And the, okay. Dust, the dust cover. So before the dust cover, uh, you is uh, is thinner, mm -hmm. um, so you can see through it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but in the newer batch, we use uh, uh, darker uh, uh, materials, so that before. Um, 
we paint some black paint on the um, on, on the uh, uh, magnets because originally the uh, the magnets is uh, uh, silver color. Mm -hmm. uh, so we paint we put we put black paint for that because we want to make it looks nicer. And later then we change the dust cover and uh, we get rid of the the uh, the paint. Uh, so we can simplify the procedures, and uh, in case if they paint, uh, they come, uh, they come, uh, they come out, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, we don't have that problem anymore. So overall, the sound quality is the same, mm -hmm. but uh, we we just improve the reliability. Uh, sound quality wise, you can see the curve might change a little bit because basically the. Um, the nano thickness diaphragm is very, very sensitive to right. any change. And oh. positioning and all that as well. Yeah, yeah. But but the sound the sound signature is the same because the driver, the diaphragm, the, the magnets is the same material mm -hmm. and uh, the structure is the same. Uh, when the HE one thousand first came out, yeah. um, that look was very iconic with the larger kind of shape to the cups. Yeah. And then now you've since released a number of other headphones since that. So there's the different versions of the HE1000. So there's the version 2 and the SE. Yeah. And then there's the Aria and the Ananda. And they all have that same kind of yeah. uh, larger cup shape. Yes. Uh, is there, what would you say are the sonic benefits of going with a larger shape like that? Well, it's, it's, not, it's nothing about benefits. <laughs> so it's, uh, for uh, um, well, the engineering, uh, in, in <coughs> engineering part, um, is everything is a parameter, mm -hmm. so uh, oval shape or circular shape. Uh, it's all kind of a parameter you can you are playing with. Okay, so you if you change the uh, uh, you change it to oval shape, is uh, the sound is warmer, the sound stage is more uh, is deeper, something like that. So, uh, but when you, when you play with the magnets, we play with the the, uh, uh, the diaphragm, you play with all. Of Tiny single details, mm -hmm. so you you have to neutralize everything and make sure that the the, the result uh, the result is best. So it's a very very complicated system mm -hmm. here we are dealing with. Yeah. And so uh, so uh, for example, Sasvara Sasvara is a top of the line flagship, is circular shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but um, I, what I can tell you is that uh, you know uh, everything matters. And uh, when we 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 do, you, you can visually see something, mm -hmm. but there are so, so many details, par different parameters, stay inside that you cannot see. Our job is to tweak everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we might tweak um, two twenty different uh, uh, parameters, and uh, make the sound best. When you are tuning the headphone, uh, do you aim for for various different units? Um, or various different models, mm -hmm. uh, do you tune them all to an ideal target curve or an ideal target? Or do you have specific ideas for, you know, you want one to be better for certain genres or one to be better for... Okay, um, it will depend on the price. Mm. Okay, the more expensive it is, and then the, uh, the more uniform um, I want to work with. So, for example, what is the best song? Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people said, "Hey, the music is uh, or sound quality is one for the other, so there's no absolute right." Yeah. Right. However, what I'm thinking is that uh, there is mm -hmm. something be more real. What is the real? The real is um, a decent symphony played in a, in a different uh, in a in a decent location. Mm -hmm. A few blocks away, there's a Carnegie Hall. Right, ideal kind of, acoustics. Yeah, yeah. so it's a, one of the best. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, my uh, in my experience, uh, I mean, before uh, when I was in New York City, I stayed in New York City for about seven years, eight years. So every month I went to either uh, Carnegie Hall or Lincoln Center, mm -hmm. and and if there is a, a good symphony there. So uh, my one of my favorite is uh, uh, London Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. uh, in Carnegie Hall, and there's another one. I still also remember there's another one, Leipzig, uh, mm -hmm. in Carnegie Hall. They, they're excellent. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you purchase a 100, more than $100, you purchase a ticket, an expensive ticket in, in between 10 to 20 uh, in the center, right? Uh, that's, that's absolutely right. So that's a goal to that's for the, goal. yeah. So if, if, if we're talking about something less than 500, uh, so best matters. 
Base matters. Base matters. Uh, this is interesting. Yeah, so uh, for the entry level uh, customers, uh, when they uh, get use of the uh, say beats, mm -hmm. uh, they they're looking for more base. And do you think that's dictated by the genres that they're listening to? Or do you think that's just because that's the equipment that they're used to? I, what I'm thinking is, um, it's nothing about the genre. Uh, hmm. Because different music, for example, uh, symphony, uh, is, let's talk about like Wagner, mm -hmm. uh, Ring. Okay, you, you compare it to uh, the heavy metal rock <laughs> music, mm -hmm. right? they are pretty similar. You cannot say this is for classic music, that is for rock music, no. Uh, for some rock music, for example, uh, some uh, UK, um, uh, UK uh, rock stars like uh, Queen or mm -hmm. uh, Pink Floyd. Oh, so yeah. within the genres, you'll find yeah. a range you'll, of... You'll yeah. find a whole big range. Yeah. Yeah. In the dive streets, those kind of music, yeah. they, uh, you will need a lot of details in mm -hmm. high frequencies, mm -hmm. right? But for some very, very heavy mental things, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the uh, dominated what dominated is the bass. I've always thought of a lot of the differences for tunings yeah. and preferences to be based on genres, but I think that's a really good point that you're bringing up. Where yeah. within genres you have totally different styles of recording, yes. where some are more bass driven and some are more you know treble focused, and you yeah, yeah you need to have a frequency response that yeah. that is optimal for that. Yeah, um, that's a very that's an important yeah. point. I think so. So another another important thing is that for symphony, right? Yeah. So um, it's important to have all kinds of uh, violins because mm -hmm. violin uh, different violins in the in the team. You know there might be uh, uh, 20, 30 violins. Uh, so the mid range uh, is as important for symphony in comparing to a uh, pop song. Mm -hmm. You know the the their female vocal. They are actually they 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 are pretty similar. I mean in the range, the frequency range mm -hmm. we're talking about. It dominate. Yeah. Mid range dominate. Symphony mid range dominate. So. Um, uh, so I, I think for hi-fi uh, standard, um, neutral, linear is important. Uh, people, if people talk about that linear sound is boring, which means that it's not as good. Mm -hmm. So if linear sounds have a lot of details, it's the best. So you need to, it has to be technically very capable yeah. to make linear sound exciting. Yeah, yeah. and I, I do see a lot of promising things mm -hmm. in the low end even. So uh, the HE400 series, yeah. the HE400i, HE4XX, um, you know, uh, there are tens of thousand people like those. Mm -hmm. uh, so which means uh, it's... Um, and those are not, sorry, those are not bass elevated. Those are also fairly yeah, linear. They're fairly yeah, linear. yeah. So I, I think it's, it's important. It's important that we have more and more people to can accept what hi-fi requirement is. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, but still, for the regular uh, consumer market, if I want to become a billionaire, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I, I I think we might need to to have more bass. Um, Maybe follow a Harman target with a bit more of a bass shelf there. The Harman the Harman curve, right? Consumer Harman, preference, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Harman curve. Well, um, there's a lot of debate. I mean, yeah. every day, day and night on the online, <laughs> fight for body. <laughs> I'm involved. <laughs> I'm not on one side or the other. I just I see it a lot. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but still, I mean, yeah. once you once you experienced the hi-fi level stuff, mm -hmm. once you experienced the real music, mm -hmm. you will never come back. Yeah, yeah, that's been my experience. That's why I'm in this. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm doing so, it. So so right so right now we we're what we're doing is still be niche market. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still small companies, but I think yeah. in the future uh, more people will convert. I, I noticed you now have a few wireless headphones. Yes. Uh, with the Ananda Bluetooth, that was the first kind of like real like high end, yeah. you know, uh, wireless capable yes. headphone. And there's a few other that are trying to make the crossover now. But I see now you you also have the the Deva. It's called. Yes. Yeah. What could you tell me about that? Because this is the. Well, I, I knew about it coming into the show, but I haven't actually had a chance to. I don't know anything about this. Yeah. All right. Um, this this for this is a very interesting story. Okay. So everybody think about that. Uh, the Hi-Fi headphones uh, is more difficult to make, and uh, the Bluetooth or wireless headphones they are inexpensive stuff. Yeah. And so they they should they should be much easier to make, but it's actually not. So most of the wireless headphones, their sound quality is not good. Mm -hmm. All right, so what is the reason? The reason is that, um, you know, for a regular pair of headphones with cables, 
what um, so there are drivers two drivers inside and there's a headband there's a ear cup so basically it costs uh, a lot less uh, comparing to uh, Bluetooth headphones because Bluetooth headphones are you um, for example the Qualcomm Qualcomm Bluetooth module mm -hmm. uh, there will be a chip and there will be some other capacitor receivers surrounding that um, a module cost ten dollar so that is manufacturing cost the design uh, uh, fitting finish those kind of things not become manufacturing is not become so uh, that's why the um, that's one of the reasons why the wireless regular wireless, wireless headphones is not good because they have to spend a lot more cost uh, so that they have to shrink uh, the acoustic cost and also the uh, there's no amplifier inside most of the uh, wireless headphones they have the amplifier art directly from the Bluetooth watch right and there's no filter mm -hmm. and so so that that, that the whole thing makes things very bad the experiencing so uh, what I want to do here uh, what we accomplished is that uh, we make something be um, small but it is a stereo file it's a it's an audio file level stuff mm -hmm. so what we have here is that uh, so other than the Bluetooth module, we have the hi-fi level deck filter. Okay, so we might not be able to use the high-end deck because those deck chips sure. consume a lot of power. Um, but uh, the hi-fi level filter is important. So it will uh, it will give you the spirit of the sound mm -hmm. and uh, amplifier. Um, to to running back the drivers, the planar magnetic or a good dynamic driver rock is amplifier for example the Deva uh, which is uh, we have we have the amplifier go up can go up to maximum one wire per channel mm -hmm. so it's a real amplifier just like some desktop output the uh, it is plan planar magnetic driver um, we uh, um, you know in other words it is something not being shrink the cost Mm -hmm. uh, we have the uh, very thin diaphragm, we have the uh, magnets on both sides. Uh, magnets on both sides for the Deva? Yeah. We have a few uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. We call single side, which is on 4 series, mm -hmm. G400i, right. G4XX. And we have the asymmetric design, which is one side, outer side we have bigger magnets, and the inner side we have smaller magnets. And, uh, but, uh, uh, Right now, we uh, for this for this very project, we want to emphasize the uh, efficiency. So uh, we use the magnets on both sides. The overall, um, it is it is a um, it is set it is a setup of uh, of the audio file, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also have the USB input, so you can work as a USB deck with headphones. Mm -hmm. so the total setup is only two ninety nine, but we tried our best. Yeah to make it sound right. That question about the magnets is very interesting to me yeah. because what I've noticed for planar magnetic technology for the high-end, yeah. uh, like, you know, $1,000 plus, like yeah. the high-end stuff, uh, it seems like for a long time, yeah. the challenges that manufacturers have been trying to overcome is how do we retain the same sound quality while making them lighter? Yeah. For even some of the double-sided uh, and some of these other technologies that HyphenMan has for the higher-end headphones yeah. as well, how have you guys managed to keep the weight down? Is it by doing this, the the alternating? Well, there are uh, still it's a it's a very complicated system mm -hmm. here. Uh, what we are talking about is how uh, is about efficiency. It's not only about magnets. Mm. Okay, magnets is important. Uh, most of the rare earth materials is coming from China, so so that we can get some uh, higher um, um, higher level uh, rare earth materials. Uh, in China, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, here is not here. Uh, I um, I feel lucky that uh, so some of our competitors in this country they might not that easy to get the material, and also uh, the the structures and the mechanisms uh, does matter a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. It's actually more important. Um, the diaphragm treatment, uh, the conductors, the uh, base, and uh, the uh, pattern. Uh, I mean the pattern, not the not the in intelligence pattern. I mean the pattern on the, For the frame. Yeah. yeah, and also the arrangement of the magnets. So that's the stealth magnet yeah. with the shaping and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's there's a whole lot of things we we yeah. need to talk. So basically, what we did is that we do have a lab, 
we, uh, we I, I worked with a technician in the lab for many years, uh, try to figure out uh, other, uh, how we can uh, uh, use this kind of different parameters to, mm -hmm. to make it work. And uh, the, um, the, first, the first important product um, for the lightweight and uh, still sound good, which is HE560. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the HE five sixty is a revolutionary revolutionary product. But when you uh, at that time, when when you guys know about that model, it's actually three years hard working. Mm -hmm. And, and that was from the original HE five hundred to a to a five sixty. That was yeah. the yeah. yeah. There's a big gap there. Yeah. If you 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 check that that time is uh, in between two thousand thirteen to two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. In about three years, there's no new model. Mm -hmm. Uh, we we work in the in the lab that night during the during the during that the year we try to quantitize quantitize, uh, quantitize the analysis the, uh, the all the, all the parameters and uh, all the materials to try to to get some know how there. So it's important. So you've you basically figured out nanoscale planar planar magnetic tech, yeah. uh, like throughout the whole range from you know mid tier to flagship to yeah. you know and now i see that you guys are breaking into electrostatic a little bit yeah um where do you see the future going for <laughs> technology the yeah the future will be wireless well wireless but do you but do you still see it as planar or do you see more electrostatic type of transducers planar, planar yeah um of course uh the planar uh the electrostatics uh they are high end mm -hmm. uh and uh even if you look at the setup here, the uh, the Shangri-La mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it might be the most uh, natural sound, the most real, the the uh, the realest sound mm -hmm. uh, in the world. I mean, it's um, a lot of musicians uh, they come to me and said uh, your setup is even better than the sound in the symphony. Mm -hmm. um, why? Because uh, uh, naturally, if you look at the structure of the electrostatics, uh, especially if you check the our, our design on our website, that Shanghao Sangrila design, the um, um, <coughs> the structure on the um, uh, on the, on the on the structures in in, in uh, both sides of the diaphragm, you know, we we use a very very thin structure there mm -hmm. to so naturally it was much smaller than the magnets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, but well, there are some electrostatics headphones. The their, their openness is not that not in that like that structure, so they're, they might not sound as good. But in our Shangri-La designs, it's very open. Mm -hmm. It's like eighty percent, ninety percent openness uh, of, uh, on the uh, in the structure. So the diaphragm is just like hung uh, on your your ear without any anything blocking block the sound. Right. Uh, so, one megahertz high frequency can e can easily go through a no no reflection. Um, so that's why it makes it so natural. P you might not be able to hear one megahertz high <laughs> frequency, but you can feel it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for the planners, uh, for the planner technology, the uh, magnets has to be there. So mm -hmm. the magnets is a is a. Uh, naturally less openness than the electrical because it'll always have some even in the best cases there'll always yeah. be some something impeding the yeah. openness yeah but it can give you more dynamic yeah. because the uh, magnet they are more powerful than mm -hmm. the electron the electrostatics mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and also it's more reliable um, net uh, for the it's about the physics right mm -hmm. electrostatic the diaphragms has to be you have to 100 percent control the uh, conductivity mm -hmm. in certain a very narrow area in a very narrow range right mm -hmm. so when the uh, weather changed and uh, some <laughs> change yeah, yeah yeah so it's it's about it's about physics when we talk about the, the wireless which is the future Mm. Right, so the wireless right now we we do have LDAC or uh, HWA or some other formats like FTAX, HD or there will be some new new formats yes. be available with the developing of the bandwidth of the Bluetooth, and six point zero or seven point zero in the future, you know the bandwidth will be increased, so there will be a lot of new codec uh, uh, of the Bluetooth technology, so it will be. Um, very very close to the cable headphones. However, <coughs> we should get rid of the amplifier. We should get rid of the deck. We should. It's not get rid of them. It's just to put them into the ear cup. So if we want to do that, um, for electrostatic headphones, it's almost impossible to put their amplifiers um, to be 
as small. I, I still remember that three years ago when I um, um, tried the first, the first um, sample of the wireless, uh, the Bluetooth Ananda sample. Mm. Um, that is a very heavy sample uh, and uh, assembly by hand. With because of the amplifiers that yeah because of, yeah uh, uh, but the, the the finished product the finished uh, nano Bluetooth is not a no yeah yeah so when I have that I I stay in the room for a whole night with no sleep <laughs> why um, streaming hmm. okay uh, basically you can find streaming vendors you can find any song uh, from streaming hmm. uh, in three seconds okay. So, uh, normally for an audiophile guy, uh, you might want to try some music, some hi-fi music. Mm -hmm. So you might have the music from uh, HD tracks or let's say the famous like flag files, Hotel huh? California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Beethoven. Everybody has that. What's that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a, it's, it's a, we have our own uh, uh, categories uh, called hi-fi music, right? Mm -hmm. So we are hobbyists. However, in that evening, when I have that, after I tried most of the music I, I, I was using for testing, uh, testing some qualities, I finished that in about two or three hours. Mm -hmm. And then while I, I was thinking about some music, when I was young, uh, when I was not a hobbyist, some music I listened to, like the TV, mm -hmm. like the cartoon movies music. Okay, you, you remember that, so you think about when, they, when you were young, Right, the uh, there's no uh, this kind of TV set. There's old TV set like Big Box, right? And uh, <coughs> and listen to those cartoon movies, music from the small drivers in the TV set. Mm -hmm. You um, you can only hear some details, mm -hmm. but most of the details are missing. So I try some cartoon movie music when I listen from eight years old, ten years old. Okay. <laughs> They're totally different song, <laughs> and I try. I, I listen to all the all the music when, you know when I was young, uh, when I grew up. Totally different, yeah. totally different. I mean, I got shocked. I mean, um, I think the word might be different because when I listen to them, it's streaming. I can get the, the song. Uh, I can get any song. I can. I can. I think about it in three seconds, and uh, there's no cable. It's absolute freedom. So uh, for for our hi-fi uh, headphone setup, uh, the cable might be three meter long, two meter long, right? If you uh, you buy a expensive um, expensive cable, somebody make it for you, maybe there's only a, a meter and a half, mm -hmm. right? You want to save money, so uh, you can only stay there. And the feeling of having it constantly feeling, there, and feeling the, the how heavy yeah. they are. You yeah. know, there are a lot of cables that stick like this, mm -hmm. and so. Um, and for the music selections, uh, you either have a hard drive or you have a CD player. I mean, you you will have you want you want you sit there. You might spend five minutes to mm -hmm. to have, to turn on everything and find the song, and another twenty minutes to warm up. Mm -hmm. And then you only listen for like twenty minutes, mm -hmm. and you feel tired because the cable and headphone is so heavy. So, uh, but with with the the future, uh, the future is uh, Hi-Fi Wireless. Another important is 5G. The 5G uh, give you a much much bigger um, bandwidth, um, so that you can you can listen into higher quality streaming. So you now have several uh, wire two wireless headphones. Yes. Um, is there any interest in doing close back? For we were talking about that earlier, but yeah. Uh, well, uh, close back. It's easy to make uh, close back headphones, which, which can easily you can easily make it as be as good as a, a pair of Beats or the Sony, mm -hmm. but it's, it, will, it will be extremely difficult to make it good. Mm -hmm. um, as I as I speak before, um, the um, um, the planet driver is huge. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, the Q value is a big problem because you will need a very big big uh, volume for the ear cup. Mm. So it's not realistic. So right now we're challenging the physics that can we make something uh, planner be a planner driver um, can have similar uh, have similar spec with the dynamic. 
So there, there's one thing. There's another thing is, uh, can we do something to tweak it, to tweak uh, a dynamic a dynamic driver to sound better? Hmm. Because most of the sound, dynamic drivers, they sound similar. Um, so we say like a, a pair of Sennheiser um, uh, or Focal, they have dynamic drivers. They do some very special things inside. Uh, basically what we're doing is cut down the efficient. Mm -hmm to yeah. get less distortion. The, the voice coil or the magnets, the yeah. big magnets, yeah. the heavy design, is all about the cut down the efficiency. Yeah. 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 So uh, the increase uh, the hardness of the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not that easy, um, but I think there we, we will have some opportunity to make something real good. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy. It takes it takes some time. But so right. that's for close back or for, for close back. Yeah, yeah. For close back. But would that also be wireless? Do you think? Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wireless wireless means that you have to have the amplifier and the yeah, yeah, yeah. and filter yeah. inside. So the whole things. I, I think the first job we we right now we are, we are pretty successful on the uh, then the Bluetooth and Deva so that we do open back. We keep the sound um, uh, as close as we can to the cable headphones mm -hmm. panels. Yeah, the, I think the close back will be the, the next step, uh, and it will be more difficult. But we will try our best. Well, that that's all the questions that I have, and I hope that that uh, these make you a billionaire. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much.